of his demise. Each speaker will have three minutes. One minute into it, I will knock at the table. So you will hear. Two minutes, you will get a knock. Two minutes thirty, you will get a knock. Two knocks. At three minutes, you will get cut off. So if you are still talking at three minutes, I will have to just, I will knock lots. Okay? Between each speaker, each team will have two minutes to deliberate. At the very end, the judges will have five minutes to deliberate, and then they will announce the verdict. I'd like to thank our judges for being here. Judge Jack, <laughs> Judge Jazz, Judge Selena, and Judge Suzanne. <laughs> First speaker from for the four team. Can you please begin? Good morning, my name is Paris Hastings and today I will be representing the side that believes Macbeth is responsible for his own demise. Also representing this team will be Alex Verhagen as Speaker 2 and John Newman as Speaker 3. We will be proving that Macbeth is to blame for his own downfall through the following arguments. Firstly, Macbeth was always going to become king regardless of whether he killed Duncan or not. The witch's prophecies always have double meanings and are up to interpretation. Macbeth and Banquo both heard and received the same process, prophecy, but Macbeth interpreted the prophecy how he wanted to. It is not the witch's fault that Macbeth interpreted these prophecies the way he did. There was no specifics of how he would become king, only that he would. Instead of waiting to be awarded king, like he was with the position of Thane of Cawdor, Macbeth jumps to conclusions and through impatience, ambition and thirst for power, kills Duncan to take the position of king for himself. Banquo, on the other hand, chose to ignore it and just let life play out as it would. Despite their two different reactions to the witch's prophecies, fate didn't change. This is proven when Macbeth sees Banquo and his son as a threat and calls for their murder. Whilst Banquo is killed, Flentz escapes and lives, proving the witch's prophecies and that Banquo's sons would one day be king correct. This shows that fate is fate and the witch's prophecies would have come true even if Macbeth hadn't killed Duncan. Another indicator that Macbeth is to blame for his own demise is the dagger he hallucinates when he goes to kill Duncan. On the surface, Macbeth wants to keep that innocent and loyal charade up and is also still conflicted between what he truly wants and what he thinks he should want. Despite this conflict, in Act 2, Scene 1, Macbeth hallucinates a beckoning dagger. Is this a dagger which I see before me, the handle toward my hand? The dagger is a symbol created from the part of his subconscious that wants to give in to his ambition and desires giving him validation or a reason to kill Duncan without placing the blame on himself. Macbeth even admits this when he says, a dagger of the mind, a false creation, proceeding from the, he the heart oppressed brain. Meaning, what he truly wants at heart, his deep desires have been oppressed by his logical brain. The fact that his subconscious hallucinates a dagger is an indicate indicator that despite his reservations, Macbeth deep down still wanted to kill Duncan. Lady Macbeth or the witches didn't manipulate that desire in him. It was already pre-existing. Which leads me to my final argument that at some point Macbeth has to be held accountable for his own actions. When Macbeth murdered Duncan, it was his only decision, his own subconsciousness and his own actions. He killed Duncan, no one else. There, no amount of manipulation can change that. A person may be pushed or influenced into making a decision, but at the end of the day, it was still his, their decision. This is proven when Macbeth says in Act 1, Scene 7, to prick the side of my intent, but only vaulting ambition which overlaps itself and falls on the other. With my Thank you, first speaker. upon first speaker of the against team. Okay, Sylvia. Good morning, my name is Sylvia, the first speaker, and this is my 
And my team will be taking the against point where Macbeth is not responsible for his own demise. I'd like to introduce the rest of the team. Our second speaker, Jessica, third, Edward, and then other components of our team that are working with us. Shakespeare, in his plays, creates many contentious characters, multifaceted and complex. Macbeth being one of these characters, but along with his own flaws, behind an ambitious and driven man, there is influence and manipulation, behind him being ultimately the spark behind his fire. In Act 1, Macbeth emphasised that he wouldn't willingly, willingly kill the king as he held a close relationship with Duncan. However, Lady Macbeth brainwashed and manipulated him using the pressure of masculinity in society, in which through societal pressure and influence, he had no choice but to confine himself to a masculine label as well as Lady Macbeth's encouragement in gaining the power in the titles of king and queen. She changes Macbeth's perspective telling him how erroneous his opinions are and thoughts are, specifically through pressure and her ability to influence him. The following quote shows these domineering, domineering and manipulating qualities of hers quite well. Art thou feared to be the same in sign and act in valor as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that and live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would, like the poor cat I adage? That is from Act 1, Scene 7. Mental well-being, by definition, is influenced greatly by intimate relationships you're a part of and the people you surround yourself with. It's an intimate relationship relied on a woman who is not only a manipulative person, but power-hungry with her only her own interests at heart, Macbeth being a pawn in her own game of chess. Toxic relationships cause feelings of low self-worth, helplessness, fear, anxiety, depression, etc. The pattern of human life is commonly captured in the phrase, whom you, whom you surround yourself with reflects who you are. And that is what I believe Macbeth has done with Lady, Lady Macbeth, how Lady Macbeth has influenced Macbeth. The witches tempt Macbeth. They seem to know exactly what they will happen, so they do not need to force him. And if they knew what was going to happen, and if his phrase is preordained, then where should they need to tell him? What will happen in order to influence him? What would have happened if the witches had not told Macbeth anything? Would the murderers have occurred? Would the murders have occurred because they were preordained, or was it preordained that the witches would tell Macbeth? There are no paradoxes that have no answer, and are only taken out of proportion by those who wish to manipulate a point and use it for their own side or benefit. Macbeth. That's it. <laughs> what Okay, timer is now beginning on two minute deliberation. Judges, you need to speak right now. Okay, so I'm going so Okay, 
opposition. Jess. Hi, I'm Jessica, I'll be the second speaker, and we're proving that Macbeth wasn't responsible for his downfall. The other team mentioned that Macbeth was responsible for his own actions, but is that really true? At the beginning, the witches actually, in the first act, may I remind you, say that they will. I'll drain him dry as hay. Sleep shall neither night nor day. Hang upon his penthouse lid. He shall live a man for bit. Weary sonites nine times nine. Shall he dwindle with pig and pine? Thought, thought his bar cannot be lost, yet it shall be tempest tossed. This shows that they literally planned this before they even met with him. They planned his downfall. So they're very powerful, aren't they? They could have made that dagger appear in his head. They could have made Franco's ghost revisit to drive him insane so that he would do these actions. They would do what he wants. This is further proven by Hecate's anger when he says, how do you dare to trade and traffic with Macbeth in riddles and affairs of death? He was angry because they caused him to do this. Why else would he be saying this? Why else would he be getting mad at them for meddling if, he did, if they did not cause this? They also say Lady Macbeth had no play in this. Yet, she literally asked spirits to come and take her womanly qualities and make her merciless in that I may pour my spirits in thine ear and chastise with the bellow of my Fill me from the crown to hit to the throne, top full of cruelty. Make thick my blood, stop off the access and passage through remorse. But these mischievous spirits, they could have easily done this big death instead of her. It seems to be what happened. He lost his remorse. He stopped acting and he started doing exactly what happened. she asked happened to her. Could easily happen. Duncan is also completely not is not completely faultless here either. He's the one who made Macbeth the killer. They said that you know he showed he was merciless and he was a murderer, but Duncan praised him for this action. The society praised him for murdering this way, and they loved him for it. They called him brave and they called him Bella. And if you've been treated like that for murdering, wouldn't you think murdering is okay? If that's all that you knew. The witches may have told half troops, but that's what they intended to do. The witches intended to tell half troops and mislead him, and Lady Macbeth intended to make him do it. She even helped with the murder. She she accused the guards of doing it. She put the blood on their hands, and when he was terrified and when he felt regret, she felt fine with it. She didn't care. She had no remorse for what they did, and yet Macbeth was one that did. He felt it too. Thank you. Yes. Hey team, we know what to do. Okay, let's 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 let's
by my previous speakers, Macbeth is undoubtedly the only person that can be blamed for his own demise, and there's no valid statements to um, argue this. So, before the play begins, we know that Macbeth has gone out to war, and he's gone and fought and killed many people, and by the description of how he's killed the people, you can tell that he already has very sadistic and violent behaviours, even before any manipula manipulation came into play from the witches or Lady Macbeth. Because these uh, these behaviours were, they led to him killing Duncan, him killing pretty much everyone. These are the reasons that, that his demise occurred. So these, these behaviours are what can be blamed for his demise. And he's the one that showed these behaviours. So earlier on, you said that you were saying a lot of could of when you were talking about the you sang a little could of when you were talking about the um, Lady Macbeth, um, oh, sorry, the witches, my bad. The witches, they could have done this, they could have done this. You had no hard facts to back it up. You have to find evidence when it comes to... <laughs> so yeah, you had to find evidence when it came to these points. Um, also, when uh, previously cited by Paris, 
you were saying that the witches were the ones that caused this, this, um, this seed that you could have planted in Macbeth's head. But as Paris said earlier, there was a lot of two way, uh, they explained a lot of two ways. So the witches never had a real clear answer and it was always up for interpretation on which way Macbeth took. And this can be shown when, uh, because Macbeth and Banquo both heard these, um, inter sorry, these prophecies that the witches said. And they can kind of represent the two paths that they could have taken. Macbeth took the evil path and Banquo chose to take, take the natural path. So, showing, so, Macbeth chose to take the evil path, which was his choice. That was, nobody had a role in him picking that. Also, you said that Macbeth, uh, Lady Macbeth showed no regret. But it was very clear that she showed Macbeth because by the end of the play, she had killed herself. And with a mixture of your invalid arguments and my team's valid arguments, Macbeth is clearly the only person that can be blamed for his own demise. Judges, please know, can you duck two marks from this team for a phone ringing? Thank you. <laughs> I now call upon third speaker of the um, against team, Ed. Hello, I'm third speaker for the opposition. My name is Edward Marku, and I'll be fighting for why Macbeth isn't the reason for his demise. Now, as speaker two has mentioned how Lady Macbeth had no part in this, Act 1, Scene 6, Scene 5, actually, states right here that she wants thee to make thy blood to make thick my blood stop up the access and passage to remorse that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose nor keep peace between the effect and it etc etc throughout the whole quote she is therefore stating to convince Macbeth no matter what to kill the king now as in scene seven towards the end he says he will not kill the king. When he approaches Lady Macbeth, he states, we will proceed no further in this business. He hath honoured he hath honored me of late, and I have bought. She then proceeds to say, what beast was it then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you does do it, then you are a man. Therefore, she is implicating the concept of masculinity and how he is not achieving those standards in, the, in, in Scotland society. Now, for your witch's argument, how they had no partition in it, in Act 1, Scene 3, to further reiterate what my second speaker has said, they have said, I'll drain him dry as hay, sleep shall neither night nor day, hang upon his penthouse lid, he shall live from a man forbid, where is the nights nine times nine, shall he dwindle, peak and pine. Though his bark cannot be lost, yet it shall be tempest tossed. Look what I have. And then Macbeth further proceeds to show up later on. This further states that the witches have actually made, they constructed the fate of Macbeth. For Banquo's ghost visiting and why it is a construct of the witches, as he appears during the feast, people think it's a hallucination. However, in Act 4, Scene 1, he reappears out of the cauldron. Now, who's to say that the dagger was also not a hallucination constructed by the witches? Wait. Yeah, here in Act 4, Scene 1, enter a show of eight kings, and the last with the glass in his hand, Banquo's ghost following. And... Thank you. <laughs> well done. Great work to everyone. Okay, the judges will now have three minutes to deliberate before they were announced the victor. Now, they will announce each speaker's individual score. Each speaker will receive their sheets. Then they will tally up the points and decide on the winner. But I think um, regardless of who wins, you've all done an amazing job. I'm so proud of all of you. So I think, I don't believe that everyone should get medals in life, but I think in this situation, you all can consider yourself winners for doing such an awesome job. So just be proud of yourself.
And why you would always write the book in question. He just said, he's the boy. Yeah, I thought they were. They didn't like, 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 I was like, like, you know when you read a book, I don't like, 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 I just want to say I'm really, really impressed um, with what you guys were able to do, both teams. Um, it was really great even having the three different sections, having the judges. And what I want to do um, for you guys, because obviously you've worked really hard to do this, is on Thursday um, I'll purchase pizzas and I'll give you guys a lunch. Okay? So well done. What we'll do is we'll do it in the Endeavor Center. Okay? So Thursday, lunch is on me. We'll have Miss Wood there. We'll also bring the 70 group um, in and it'll be an opportunity for you just to get to know them because they're a little bit nervous and everything starting their high achiever journey. Um, and so we'll celebrate all together on Thursday at lunch next week. All right? Do we have a couple of chocolates quickly? Just the final scores. Losing team first. Okay. So, there was a difference of, what's that? About 12. 
12 out of, no, out of a possible about 250. So, oh, that's a long time. Oh. Something like that. Anyway, so the team that lost was the 14. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 212.5 to 225.